In this video, we will cover using Recode to transform continuous to categorical variables in SPSS and generating histograms for continuous variables in SPSS. To follow along in this demo, you will need the following. Access to SPSS software, the SAT 2016 PA data file in SPSS.SAV format. In our previous videos, we focused on categorical variables. We looked at how to create frequency distribution tables, bar charts, pie charts, cross tabulations, clustered bar charts, and stack bar charts for variables like region, which was a one to eight coding of which region the state the school was located in. And we looked at things like charter, which was a dichotomous indicator coded zero if the school was not a charter school and one if the school was a charter school. Please note that the previous tools are not appropriate for continuous variables. Simply put, continuous variables have too many unique values to create meaningful visualizations of data for our audience. To illustrate, I'm going to create a frequency distribution table for the composite average, which is the average final SAT score for each school. Here I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Frequencies. I've selected the composite average variable and click OK. You can see here that SPSS will produce a frequency distribution table for our continuous variable, but because each unique value essentially gets its own line in the table, the table is too large and too unwieldy to be meaningful or be interpretable for your audience. If you want to create a meaningful frequency distribution table or bar chart from a continuous variable, you'll want to recode or transform your continuous variable into a categorical one. The recode function allows you to specify ranges of your continuous variable and collapse them down into categories of a new variable. You've probably seen continuous variables collapsed into categorical variables if you've ever taken a survey that asked about income or education level. Those surveys might say, what is your income level? But instead of listing your actual income in dollars, you'll select between different categories or brackets. In those instances, you might say $10,000 to $20,000, $20,000 to $30,000, $30,000 to $40,000. Essentially, what we want to do is create those brackets in SPSS for our continuous variable. To do that, let's take a look at our SAT scores. We see from our large frequency distribution table that SAT scores have a low of 955 and all the way at the bottom have a high of 1978. You'll have to decide on your own how you want to define your brackets. Perhaps for our simple example here, I want to create a three category variable, low, medium, high. Using the cumulative percentage, let's say I want to think that the lows would be the bottom 33%. In this case, maybe we'd say that any score that is below uh, 1,400 might be a low. Going up to the, the second third, anything between 1,400 and 1,500 might be the medium performing schools. And then anything above 1,500 might be the high performing schools. So to transform or recode this variable, we're going to go to the transform menu option. Under the second set of options, we have recode. SPSS gives you the option to recode into the same variable or recode into a different variable. I think you're always better off selecting recode into a different variable because recoding into a different variable is non-data destructive. What I mean by non-data destructive is if you select recode into the same variable, SPSS will replace your original data with your new coding. In this regard, you will have lost the original data you've started with. By recoding into a different variable, you're preserving your original variable and creating a new one. So here I'm going to select recode into different variable. Once you open the recode in a different variable menu option, you're able to select your input variable. In this case, we're going to use the composite average SAT scores. And we have to then specify what our new variable name and coding will be. So perhaps I'm going to name my new output variable composite average and I'm going to put an underscore and say three cat. So we're going to create a composite average three category variable. You'll notice here in the dialog window 
it says composite average with an arrow to question mark. We're going to hit the change button to create that new output variable. Now you can see that the output variable will become composite average three category. You'll also then have to specify in the dialog box the old and new values. That is, what do you want the transformations to be? So looking at this new window, we have an option box to specify the old values and the new values. So here I said that I basically want to take the lowest value, so whatever the lowest value in my data set is, or my variable is, through, and here we want to say anything below 1400, so I'm going to say 1399. So I'm telling SPSS here that any value in composite average that is between the lowest value, in this case 955, all the way through 1399 is going to become new value 1. And that's going to signify my low performing schools. To specify this, I'm going to click Add. And now you can see that the dialog window says the old lowest value through 1399 will become a 1. I want to take my middle value, so now I'm going to look at a range of 1400 to 1499, and I'm going to make that new value 2. Here telling SPSS that anything that is a 1400 through a 1499 from my original composite average variable will now become a 2. And then finally, anything that's above 1500 will become a 3 for my high performing schools. So here it says 1500 through the highest. Clicking continue, I'm now ready to click OK and create my new variable. Going back to our data window, we can see now that I have a new composite average three category variable coded one, two, and three matching my specifications. So here, this school, Bermudan Spring High School, had a composite average of 1477. By my recode rule, that is now a two. Gettysburg Area High School, which had a composite average of 1517, is now a three based on my rule. I can go to the Variable View tab and then give those 1, 2s, and 3s labels. So here we'll say 1 is a low SAT school, 2 is a middle SAT school, and 3 is a high SAT school. I can now perform frequency distribution tables and bar charts on my new three category variable created from the original continuous variable. So here we have a new frequency distribution table that shows us the low category middle category and high category counts and frequencies. We can also create bar charts based on our new variable. The one caution to think about or exercise here is that you're making a researcher decision when you're choosing how to recode your continuous variable into a categorical variable. For instance, you can very much change the cases that go in each category and come up with very different results. To illustrate, let's create a new variable using the recode function. But here I'm going to select slightly different brackets to categorize my low and middle and high SAT scores. Once again, I'm going to go to transform, recode, I'm going to create a new version of the three category, which I will call composite average three cat B. And here I'm going to change around these codings a little bit. I'm going to say anything that is below a 1000 SAT score is going to be my one category or low. So here lowest through 999. I'm going to make my middle category anything from 1000 all the way up to 
let's say 1500. And then I'm going to say anything that is above 1500 will be my three category. Now you'll notice here that gives me some slightly different codings on what we're looking at. Creating a bar chart, you can see that our bars look very different from my first coding to my second coding. Here, I've taken more cases out of the low SAT realm and I packed them into the middle SAT realm. That portrays a very different substantive picture than my first graph. So once again, you are making a researcher decision on how to display information by recoding continuous variables into categorical variables. Finally, before we conclude this video, there is one option to graph a continuous variable that may help visualizing how to break apart or recode into a categorical variable. And that is called a histogram. To create a histogram, I'm going to go to Chart Builder, and I'm going to use the bar chart option. I'm going to drag over, instead of my composite average category variable, my continuous composite average. You'll notice here that the y-axis changes from count to histogram. It can also be modified here where it's our statistic. By clicking that option, we're going to get a graphic representation of the composite average score. This is akin to a bar chart, but really reflects the range of values in the continuous variable rather than discrete values like we'd see in a bar chart. So a couple different options on how to handle continuous variables in SPSS for simple features like frequency distributions, bar charts, and histograms. This concludes our short video on using continuous variables with these tools.